All right, there's one restaurant I go to every time that I'm in New Orleans. It's Morrow's. And today we have Larry Morrow. He right now has four businesses in New Orleans, right now, that are all thriving. And I couldn't even guess how successful they were. I got it wrong. I would say Morrow's, we hold 85 people. You wouldn't believe what we were doing. Like, what's a typical weekday for Morrow's? <laughs> I don't know if I see that. Okay, what you don't know is that Larry has a gambling problem. <laughs> this is what he said. I couldn't get up from the blackjack table. That was the issue. <laughs> that was the issue. I couldn't get up. But now it's like, you know, I gamble on my businesses. So the story's insane, right? I mean, he makes $11,000 promoting a party at his birthday. And at that moment, changed everything. Me and my homie, we did our birthday party. We like $11,000. Mm. I was 20 years old. So I'm like, yo. When I got a taste of that, I'm like, man, I could really some money doing this so that's when i started to really take advantage of that opportunity at the time and really start produce producing more events i asked him some really comfortable questions and i got really comfortable answers but i asked a few uncomfortable ones you didn't mention your dad much yep you have a relationship with him nope at all nope and then somewhere in the interview the conversation turns left and it kind of becomes a therapy session like even when we see each other we never had a conversation what do you call him I don't even know. So I ask him a question. I need to know how you're doing this. Opening all these different restaurants. I know a lot of people, they can't get one right. I was at this point where I'm like, you know what? Is he done about to be extremely wealthy? I'm about to be extremely broke. And I don't care. I had to ask him. I mean, he's engaged. So I had to ask him about a prenup. You married? Engaged. Congratulations. Yeah. Congratulations. Are you getting a prenup? No. This is an episode you have to watch the entire episode. Right when you think it's going to be over, he gives another 10 minutes of life-changing information. Hit the subscribe button and watch it in its entirety. Make sure you're commenting throughout the episode because I want to hear your thoughts the same time that I got it. Let's go. Welcome to another edition of the Social Proof Podcast. Oh my gosh. I I knew this brother before I met this brother. Well, I didn't even know you. You know how you go to a dope restaurant and what's your favorite restaurant, okay? It's like your favorite restaurant. You don't get out much? Oh, yes, I eat a lot. <laughs> so I go to Capitol Grill in Atlanta and I'm like, yo, this is amazing. Or we go to Ruth's Chris or we go to one of these different restaurants or you go somewhere out of town and you're like, yo, this is the best food I've ever had in my life. So we go to this little spot on the corner in Louisiana, and I think it was on a, some sort of list, right? So me and my wife was like, yo, let's just figure out where we're going to eat at. So she actually planned out the whole trip. It was a, a, a art walk where you just go around and they show you all the artwork. Mm -hmm. And she was like, all right, next on my agenda is this place called Morrow's. Mm -hmm. And I said, all right, let's do it. So we go. And it's one of those things that we talked about since we left. Mm -hmm. Meaning every time, you know, you got your favorite spots in the city. Every time I come to the city, we go in here. And every time since then, when I came to New Orleans, I went to Morrow's. Every single time. So uh, it's good to see the owner, yeah. the founder, the creator, uh, Larry Morrow. What's up, brother? Taking it easy, man. Appreciate you having me. Oh, brother, I'm happy to be here, man. And can I tell you that if I had to pick out of a lineup, the owner of what I what I thought was just like a high end kind of restaurant. If I had to pick out a lineup of the owner of Morrow's, yeah. it wouldn't be a black man with braids in a fresh lineup. <laughs> <You know? laughs> I, yeah, I didn't think so. Right. So when I met you, I'm like, "Yo, this man is special." But it's not just Morrow's now, right? Nope, not not just Morrow's. Is uh, so I have Morrow Hospitality, which houses you know Morrow's. Have a spot called Mondays, it's a restaurant I own, uh, thirteen thousand square feet. Mm. have a spot called Sun Chung. I named it after my grandmother. It's an Asian-American spot in the French Quarter. I opened that up in May. have a spot called Treehouse, which is a night uh, nightlife lounge, you know. Mm -hmm. have a Morrow State coming this year. have a Spicy Mango, which is a New Orleans Caribbean fusion coming this year. And I have a, a new club that I'm opening up. Uh, it's like, I wouldn't say a club. It's like maybe a club restaurant, like a hybrid between a club and restaurant. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. When you tell me all this stuff, my entrepreneurial brain goes crazy yeah. because <laughs> I could never even. So I got this podcast studio, right? Yeah. Where we book out, you know, people can rent it. I, I'm i not about to open three more. 
right, right now, <laughs> like one at a time, baby. Yeah. And then it's restaurant, it's food. So nothing here goes bad. Real tedious, yeah. You know what I mean? Nothing in this studio goes bad. If nobody books the room, they just didn't book the room. It's not like the camera gets old. Right. However, if someone doesn't come to your restaurant, food spoils and it's just waste. Right. People still got to get paid. I need to know how you're doing this. Opening all these different restaurants. I know a lot of people, they can't get one right. Right. Um, I think, uh, honestly, man, I had this like, I, I was at this point where I'm like, you know what? It's either I'm about to be extremely wealthy or I'm about to be extremely broke. <laughs> so I'm like, you know what? I'm about to go hard. This is what I'm doing. You know, I was, I invest into real estate. You know, I invest into cryptos. I invest into a bunch of different things. But, um, you know, I was even like, you know, of course I produce events, but like, you know what? There's more longevity here, right? You, know, you do events, it's constant. Like you got to constantly grind and grind and grind. The restaurants, yes, I have to grind, but... I have a you know a big support system. Have a, a, a least almost like three hundred employees, and um, that help make all of this possible. But um, you know, I, I want to play the long game and not the short. You know, club is so much liability. Uh, love it, but you know, I'm like, you know what? I wanted to dive deep into hospitality, so um, that's what I was doing. And um, right now, got three new locations opening up. Uh, do I have it all figured out? No. Seems um, like it. it. It seems like it, but man, like you know, every day we're figuring it out. Um, but that's the thing, you know, if there's a problem, we're going to figure out, you know, we're going to figure out how to solve the problem. Yeah. Um, and you know, just, just being very ambitious right now, you know, right now I feel like, you know, when you're in that season, you got to strike. And right now I feel like we're in that season and, um, actually taking advantage of just the opportunity, um, that I have. And, um, you know, that, that window of opportunity is open right now. So really just, just going all in, you know, it's either you're going to see a lot of growth over the next few years, or you're going to see, you know, a lot of, um, I mean, you won't see anything other than the growth, right? <laughs> you, you won't see anything other than that because um, I'm pa I'm very passionate about this. My team is, um, and we have a vision. So yeah. uh, right now we're just executing. We're you know just putting our best foot forward, taking this extremely serious. Yeah. You know, um, ownership team. Who who are your partners? So my mother, she's a partner uh, in two concepts: Morrow's and Monday. Okay. I also have a partner, um, one of my brother's mentors, JC. Um, uh, on not a partner in Morrow's, not a, a partner in Monday, um, and you know other concepts that I have. Uh, yeah, so 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 essentially, for like some of my um, like I started moving at a fast pace, right? So my mom's like, "Look, I can't do this," right? Mm -hmm. So I'm like, "All right, cool." So me and JC, we just started to you know just just go hard with it, you know. Is that is that the 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 club side? Um, I would say more sort of restaurant. He doesn't come from a restaurant background, but he's someone who, uh, uh, Haitian guy, man, my brother, man, been, I'm 32, been my brother for 12 years. And, 32? Um, yeah. And, really? Uh, yeah. Yeah. I am, I'm behind in life as a whole. <laughs> like, I mean, no hate, it's just no. you're younger and doing better. You know what I mean? Nah, man. <laughs> Man, I would just say, man, I was really just at a, at an early age. I was just rolling the dice, like really trying yeah. to figure it out. I always worked. Fourteen years old, I worked at McDonald's. I was flipping burgers. Worked at Chuck E. Cheese finish line. I worked at uh, like from fourteen to twenty. I worked mm -hmm. right. So it's not like I was like I stumbled upon this. No, I was really getting it in. You know, while friends was able to be outside during the summer, I was working, saving my money. So uh, twenty years old, I worked my last two jobs. I was a lifeguard in the daytime, the valley at night. That was I quit at twenty. Um, then just went full time with event promotion, and since then I've been signing my own checks. You know? Hold on, so you're a lifeguard during yeah. the day, and then doing valet at night. At night, yep. And I would imagine so at the clubs. I would imagine no, 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 not at the clubs. I was at this spot called One River Place. So it's condominiums, and it was um, real high end, mm -hmm. and it's crazy. Like I used to park this guy uh, cars named John Hamid, good friend of mine, Ferraris and everything, right. And it's crazy how, like, you know, it was like a full circle moment when we reconnected. I'm like, yo, I used to valet your cars. And he's actually a good friend of mine, very successful doctor, um, extremely, you know, a whole bunch of real estate. And, um, you know, it's just crazy how you can actually be in one one space today and, and, and you know, you valeting these cars and wanting to, you know, be able to experience the other side. You know what I mean? And, um, you know, to now be, being friends with the guy car, who, who cars you was valeting, you know? So... Yeah. Man, it's just dope just to see just to see the growth, you know, yeah, over sure. the years. All right, so your lifeguard doing valet. What was the vision at that point? 
the vision you're wasn't 20 years old, right? Yeah, the vision wasn't this, right? Uh, the vision was just like, all right, let me make some dollars doing event promotion, you know? So, okay, so while you're valeting, you always were thinking, I want to do a, I want to do well, promotion. Well, well, when I was doing events, while I was, while I was valeting. While you're valeting? Yeah. So that was like my side hustle. Oh, so you was always getting to it. Yeah, I was getting to it. Yeah, okay. So. <laughs> All right. So what level of event? Was it club? Was it, it was clubs. It clubs. was clubs. You know, I'll do a little party. First party I did that like I like really made money off off of. Uh me and my homie, we did our birthday party. Um, made like eleven thousand mm. dollars. I was twenty years old, so I'm like, yo, <laughs> I can have fun and make money. So um that's when I started to go hard with it, man. Invest into, you know, different parties and start weekly nights and um I Hold on real quick. So your birthday's coming up. You yep. and your man's y'all do a party. Make eleven grand. Off the door, off the bar, the straight off the door. Straight off the door. So the club owner just says, yo, whoever you invite. Yeah, we had to rent out the space. Yep. So, oh, you rented out the space? Yep, rented out the space. It was a club called the Hangar. So I had to pay a couple thousand dollars for the space. Um and you know, end up profiting eleven thousand dollars that we was able to bust down. In the club, they still open the bar, so obviously. yeah. So they made money off the bar, Got and it. Um, you know, of course, when you pay that, pay that, um, pay for the space, you know, that's covering. They opening up and making profit, you know. Oh, so that's the way the club. I I thought the club is just open and a promoter. You say, hey, you be the promoter and you make money off the door, but that promoter is paying to control the club for that night. Well, control everything but the bar. You can't. I, I can't control. You can't control the bar, but you have to pay a premium number to, you know, buy out the bar so that you can sell liquor. Sometimes it makes sense. Sometimes it don't. Got it. But at that at that age, I was just like, you know, I wasn't privy to any of that. Yeah, yeah. in front twenty dollars a head or whatever. Yeah. So did y'all know understand how to hold the line and all that kind of stuff? Nah, just- we didn't really understand anything. It was just more so like we're doing a party. That's teenagers trying to make money. Yeah. And it worked out. Yeah, for sure. So you make the eleven grand, and I would imagine was it the next week? You're like, yo, let's run it back. It's my birthday again. You no, know, I'm like, if, if if I see something working, is 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 up. You know what I mean, because like I said, I always work fourteen to twenty. I always, you know, work the nine to five. And um, of course, you know, the goal is not to always be working for someone. So yeah. when I got a taste of that, I'm like, man, I could really make some money doing this. So that's when I started to really. You know, take advantage of that opportunity at the time and really start produce producing more events. And how far from that birthday night did you quit lifeguard or quit valet? Um, I can't remember the exact timeline, but it, it was shortly after that. It wasn't wasn't too long after that. I think, uh, maybe, I mean, it had to be with within six months. You know? Got it. Yeah. And now, you know, I'm just full time. Full time. Yep. Since gotcha. since twenty, like last job I worked for somebody was twenty years old. So you know, mm-hmm. for the past twelve years, I've been working for myself. Uh, you know, it's been entrepreneurship, you know, ups and downs. Um, I've experienced my fair share of losses um, and everything. But So the know. restaurant wasn't the first thing you tried from promotion? Mm, well, I, opened, I actually opened up a restaurant when I was 22 years old. Um, really? Yes, called Larry's Po' Boys and Wings. Larry's? Po' Boys and Wings. Po' Boys and Wings. Yep, okay. on Canal Street. Ooh. Smack, smack right down Canal. So that's two years of getting your money up from promotion. Yep. And what gives you the idea, yo, I'm going to open this restaurant? So my mom, she found this location. So my grandmother had this spot called Pizza Stop back in 99. And it was at that exact location that became available that my mom reached out to me about. And so my grandmother my, my grandmother used to do extremely well over there. So my mom, she was like, yo, this spot is available. You know, and at that time, you know, life taking my mom, my family on this roller coaster ride. You know, it's like up downs like you know just you know how life is and explain um, explain entrepreneur stuff like yeah. you know it's like so my your mom, mom was an entrepreneur too mom was an entrepreneur but uh at that time she was experiencing you know hardships right so me um at my, my early teens you know I, I played that you know my father wasn't there i played that that uh that role for my family you know only man in my family my mom my sister my grandmother so uh i was ambitious like like i was inspired to uh figure something out to help my family out so I dropped out of college as well at 20 years old. And um, my mom, she was the motivation at the time. She was the motivation to really just try to figure some things out and figure it out fast. So um, when she was like, yo, I have this opportunity. Let's open up this spot. Um, we opened it up and it was great. You know, it was doing good. Um, I just think it was at the wrong time in my life. I was 22. I wanted to be in the streets. I didn't want to be responsible. You know, I, want, I didn't want to be in the grocery store. Um, craziest thing ever. Then my mom gets pregnant. <laughs> 
Word. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, crazy, right? <laughs> <laughs> she get, she gets pregnant and it's like, you know, we got this business and we're trying to figure it out. I'm young. And just everything just wasn't happening. It was just the wrong time in my life. Um, when you say it was in the streets, meaning... In the streets, just like I wanted to be outside. Yeah, yeah. you, you outside. don't want the I responsibility of running a business. Yes, yes, yes. I wanted to be outside. So, um, how long did that last? Uh, about four or five months. So, four, you opened it, Larry's, Po Boys, and Wings. Yeah. Five months later, it's a wrap. Yep. And I and I actually told people, I made a post about this like a year and a half ago. And I'm like, I, I lied and told people I sold it because I was so embarrassed that I failed, right? <laughs> So I was lying, like, yeah, I sold it, right? And um, it was just because, man, I, I was like, I felt like a failure, right? I lost the business. I invested all my money into it. I was in the casino gambling, losing all my money in the casino, right. trying to get back. So it was just kind of like, you know, I was just, you know, just just going through, you know, just trying to figure things out. So I didn't have no idea that I was going to get back into the restaurant space. I was just more so going full-time with events. Yeah. And that's when I started to take events, like, way more serious because I took that L over there. So I know anytime I need to shake back, I'll go produce a lot of events. I'll plan out some stuff. I'll go make all my money back. Um, and I just kept, you know, just kept, you know, moving forward until uh, 2017. Mom's found another location. She was like, look, Larry, I found the location. I think it'd be a great space. Mm -hmm. Like, ah, I don't know. <laughs> but me being as ambitious as I am and um, willing to take those risks, I decided to, you know, Say, all right, cool, let's do it, right? Yeah. And um, ended up making that investment. Moms was like, it was a raw space. We had to build it out totally. Yeah. You know, like we had to. Leased it or bought it? Leased it. Okay. Yeah, I, didn't, I, didn't, I couldn't buy that building at that time, right? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you're I, doing promotions. I mean, there's money but, there. But by right, thinking about it like this, right? I'm doing promotions. I'm making money. I'm making cash money. But at the end of the day, to buy a building, I need to be paying taxes. Yeah. I need to be showing my income. Mm-hmm. At that age, you're not thinking about that. None of that. Right? So I wasn't I wasn't privy to any of that. So I couldn't go to the bank and get financing. Yeah. Right? Which a lot of people at that age, 20, what, 27, 28, they're not thinking about all of that. Yeah. Especially as an entrepreneur, because it's like no real manual telling you, like, oh, go pay your taxes, yeah. you know, go go like get your PLs in order so that you can go to the bank and uh, acquire, you know, and get loans and stuff, you know, lines of credits yeah. or whatever. So um we got the space, leased it renovated it um i would say that probably cost probably between 250 to 300 and i to went to renovate it to renovate it right because it was nothing it was just all uh, four walls let me ask you this did the owner of the building that you're leasing it from T. kick nope. in some of that bread nope no but i think at the time if i would have understood more of what like what i know now yeah. probably could have got you know some ti yeah. and if i had the ti tenant improvement yeah but if i had like or if i had the um the brand that i have now because you know, back then I used to walk into, even after a year of being open, I used to walk into spaces and trying to get acquire new spaces. And, you know, it's like, ah, like they just curved me. Yeah. Right. But now if I walk into a space now, they want me there. Right. It makes sense. So, makes um, sense. you know, it's just, just building that reputation. And, um, but yeah, after we built, built morals out, um, I was real confident. I'm like, and then my mom, she was still going through her hardships. And, um, because of some of the things that she's experienced between, like me, op us opening up the the po boy shop and that, I was real motivated at this point. And um, um, I remember us like she had some sit some things going on. And when we opened up this, I'm like, watch, just watch, it's going it's going to happen, right? And um, when we opened up Marlowe's, just had a line down the block, you know. So all right, because we we got to be skipping steps because you open this Larry's po boys and it was doing Larry's po boys was doing good. It was just that four or five months. But but it's the thing, right? I wasn't prepared. Like I didn't know what to expect in the restaurant industry, right? Like you gotta have some reserves to pay rent. Mm -hmm. I didn't have no reserves. I went all in. Yeah. Right? You gotta you gotta just be at twenty seven when we we're about to open tomorrow's, I was in a better financial position. I had a bigger brand. Strictly from club promotion. Yeah, and, and I and I knew that I I had to have some reserves just in case to hold me over for a few months, yeah. right? So I went in that went into that situation a little bit more prepared yeah. because of my experience prior to that. So, you know, and my brand was bigger. So when we opened up, like, like think about it, I'm 28, 26, 2016. This was in 2018, 2016. I went to, I booked everybody, you know, from Drake to Diddy to Floyd to oh, wow. Mary J. Blige. Like, I booked all these people and I built my brand up in the industry and um, created a lot of, uh, collected a lot of contacts, like database and stuff, like emails. So mm. 
you know, over the years, I built that brand up to where I was able to market anything. Like you give me any any product, I can sell it uh, because, yeah. you know, I was producing these big events and, you know, not just producing them, but like, you know, think about it, you got Drake hopping on the stage in the club. Like when the yeah. last time you seen Drake on a mic in the club, right? Yeah, for sure. You know, Diddy up there with 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 Mary with French Montana, you know. So I think that really gave me a um, a platform to stand on and uh, to build something to where people were buying into my brand, right? So when I opened up Morrow's, it wasn't hard to sell that product because of the business that I built prior to it. Got it. And my mom being established in the restaurant industry um, and have her own brand as well. But she wasn't established in the restaurant industry at that point. Well, no, she had she had restaurants. Mom always been in the restaurant industry, right? Oh, really? Yeah, she always been in the restaurant industry, but I would say this has been the most successful. Uh, she had her own brand and people were familiar with her and her cooking. Um, Hold on real quick. Hold on. So when you opened Larry's, yep. that was when you were 20 years old. 22. When you were 22. At that point, did your mom have another restaurant? She didn't have another restaurant. That was both of y'all first joint together. No, she had restaurants back in the day. Right? I got but you. But then after Larry's Pro Boys and Wings, she opened up a spot called Lenora's Grill. It was like on this golf course. Got you. It was doing well. Ended up having to, you know, move out. Move out that spot, but when she moved out that, we made a transition into Morrow's. Got it. And that's when, you know, everything just took off. Got it, got so it. So it wasn't like, you know, I came into this, like, I, my mom had a, had some experience in this industry yeah. um, from the um, culinary standpoint. You know, she, she's a chef. and um, Oh, wow. Yeah, so I think the, huh? the concoction, like, her um, her being able to focus strictly on the food, yeah. me focus on the vibe and bringing people there and her her not having to wear every hat. Was a great combination to really set us up for success, you know. Who's the business? I'm sure both of y'all are business people, but who is the more strict business person between you and your mom? Oh man, I, I would say I'm definitely I'm real, real, real strict when it pertains really? to business numbers, everything. So yeah, I'm definitely that person. And she takes care of the food. She takes care of the food. Yes, right? she takes care of the food. Gotcha. I'm sure both of y'all run the operation, but you are. Yeah, okay, I, I, let's I'm, make I'm this on the cool numbers. Sexy. I'm on the numbers. I'm on it heavy because um, you know I have a lot of friends and mentors in the industry to where I, like you know I might go to New York and I might be in Kess Hospitality Kitchen, right? Yeah. I might be in you know different establishments checking out the operation. So my exposure just has been a little bit different. Mm. And my exposure has allowed me to see a lot of things, which make me you know. It gives me a different, you know, perspective on it. Yeah. So I would take that and I would bring it back and bring it back home. Like, yo, look, this is what I saw. Yeah. Right. And to try to paint the picture and just, you know, because at one point, you know, my mom's never thought that, like, you know, like, how, how do you open up multiple spaces? Right. Mm -hmm. I'm like, it's easy. I'm like, Tillman Fatita did it. Right. Yeah. He owns 600 plus restaurants. He owns the Rockets. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I'm like, when I when I get to research and deeper into the industry and I'm seeing these people on this and that, you know, to some people, it's scary. Or how does this person do this? And I'm like, you know, or, or some people may think it's not possible. But for me, it's like, oh, shit, if that person can do it, then it's obviously, it's yeah. proven that it can be done. It's just having the right operations in place. It's having the right people, the right systems. And so seeing things like that helps me dream a lot bigger and say, you know what, we can do it too. But you got to have the right team around you in order to, facilitate all of that you know yeah. in the restaurant space this is what i would gather i'm no expert but i would imagine that it's a three part maybe more than that but um, the food the vibe or the experience and well i guess customer service would go into the, like the in the numbers i would say yeah. so like the food the vibe yeah. or uh the promotion getting people in the building which one would be most important? How would you put those in order? Like for importance to keep a, a thriving restaurant, promotion, food, or the vibe inside the so restaurant. So you can have a successful, you can have a, a restaurant generating a lot of money, a lot of revenue, right? But you can still be losing because you're not controlling your costs, right? So I would say, I'm gonna separate those two categories, okay. right? I would say, like, if you wanna be successful in the restaurant industry, and I'm, and I'm no expert, I'm still learning, right? I still got, I have mentors, I have people, you know, who helped me. And I would say, if you want to be successful, you got to understand the science, right? The science behind the, behind, you know, what you see in the front of the house, right? When people ah, walk in. Because you got profit margins, right? Like, you know, like typically in the restaurant industry, you speak, you're talking about 15 to 20% profit margin, right? So- That don't seem like a lot. It don't seem like a lot, but it's, it, it can be a lot because the average restaurant, what you think the average restaurant do? 
Um, per day? No, I mean, let me say per year. Let's, all right, let me go day. I would think you got like a $20, $30 plate. Let's say you get a, a maybe $3,000 a day. I mean, maybe you talking about a small restaurant, but like. A small restaurant? I mean, like a, a grab and go, maybe. I mean, for me, I mean, right. I don't think what we ever did 3000 a day. What bars I mean, we doing? Huh? What's a, a typical weekday for Marles? I don't know if I want to see that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I want to see that. But you only get 15, 20% of that. Well, I mean, but see, but, but my profit margins at Marles is about 25 to 30%, right? Because you got to understand the science. You got you to gotta control your food costs, right? You got to control your labor. Let's so if you control your labor quick. and your food, it's like, you know, so, I mean, that's the biggest thing. You got to control your food and your labor. You control it, your, your liquor costs and everything. It's going to be good. If, if you say, you know what, you're selling 70% 70, 70 food, 30% alcohol, but you figure out a way to sell more alcohol and you get to 60, 40, now you got higher profit margins. $3,000 a day is not a lot of money? I mean, I mean. I, that's small, but I'm just saying. Yeah. Because that's 90,000. You, you wouldn't even believe it if I told you what That's 90 a day. month. I'm, oh, yo, that's man. a million dollar business. Morrow's didn't start off doing doing ninety thousand a month. Morrow started off doing way, and then we've grown over the years. So, you know, Morrow's really? is not, you know, yeah, Morrow's is. I was I, I ain't gonna lie. I, that's a side conversation. <laughs> <laughs> that's a side conversation. Yeah, All I mean, right. I, you know, I, I, I don't restaurant. want people outside Morrow's. <laughs> right. Nah, but I, I would say honestly, like, cause I've done my my research and I've talked to different uh, restaurants and. Uh, in in our community, even the bigger brands, right? I would say Morrow's. We hold eighty five people. You wouldn't believe what we were doing, like, cause just say compared to yeah, it ain't that big of a place, right, but bro. compared to downtown French quarters, right? We we competing against the the French quarter restaurants, right? And our overhead probably ain't nowhere near as high, mm. right? So we taking people off the beating path to come to us, and and like we're we're like. I've talked to several restaurants, right? Our numbers exceeding their numbers wow. in the French Quarter, and that's Morrow's. But then you got Monday that holds thirteen. I mean, that's thirteen thousand square feet that holds two hundred some people. It makes Morrow's look like a, a little shrimp. <laughs> so, you know, wow. it, it's, it's definitely like it's definitely just one of those things. But like I said, you can you can make a lot of you know you can gross a lot of money. But what are you going to keep? Mm. So that's all on you. So I'm in meetings every week. Yo, we got to get our food costs down. I want twenty percent. I want twenty seven percent food costs. You know, I want twenty to twenty five percent labor costs. You know, so you know it's like I'm, I'm real strict on my numbers. And everybody sometimes my numbers seem unrealistic to my team, and they like, I'm like, no, this is what I want. So we got to figure it out. We got to make hard cuts. Okay, what is one of the biggest cuts that you made to create? Like you, like because I, what I know about businesses, yeah. it's not a hundred things you can do, but like you make one tweak that can really turn the corner for you. What's one tweak that you made? I understand. I would say like know where you are when you when when you're there, right? Like so having like a bookkeeper, right? Like a person who strictly dedicated to uh, organizing like all of our numbers, right? Like our food costs, our uh, our labor, our um, our our products, like you know cleaning products. You know all that stuff matters, right? Because you talking about a small margin, but like if if I'm three percent over in in labor. Essentially, that can be like ten thousand dollars, right? Like my mm. at, at Morrow's, I mean at at Monday, my my labor's you know damn near a quarter million dollars a month in labor, just yeah. employees, employees. Yo, but hold on, don't they make most of their money from uh, tips though? Yeah, but 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 no, but you got to think about the back of the house. Like I got you know, you know, at one at, on one shift I may have at Monday, I may have forty people working, but but, but the bulk of it, the bulk of the money is in the kitchen, right? So. My my GMs, my managers, my kitchen, uh, my line cooks, my expo, um, prep cooks, you know. Unbelievable. Yeah. The fact that you can manage that. Okay, but give me give me one tweak for all the restaurant owners. Something that you saw and you noticed, you made a change and it worked. So last year when I opened up Monday, right, we're generating a lot of money. But um, we weren't seeing none of the money. Like the account wasn't growing. So I'm like, yo, what is going on? It made me really dive, like all, me and my team dive in and see like what's really going on. How do we fix this? Come to find out we're losing money every month, but we're grossing a lot of money. Like I said, mm. you can gross a lot, but you can actually still be losing if you don't know where you are. So when we got a control of our, our expenses and like, you know, we were able, and then our labor costs, we were able to kind of like, you know, tweak it. Like, oh, look, we're 50% up in labor. Oh, we need to be at 25%, mm. right? Think about it. You generating 
beyond six figures a month, and you talking about you're twenty five percent over, right? Got it. So you do that, like you do the math, like that's a lot of money that you could be, you know, putting in your account. Um, so I always break it down to my team, like, yo, if we're if we're four percent over in food, a uh, 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 food cost, we're five percent over in our labor costs. You know, that's extra nine percent that we could be putting in our account, and you know, I don't have no small establishments. Yeah. Like, like I, we don't have the, you know, we're doing, you know, real numbers. So that nine percent is is huge. It means a lot. It means a lot. And, and you know, it's never oh, going to be perfect. So yeah, we always sure. going to find ourselves like maybe a couple percent over. But I'm always like, you know, aiming for, you know, better than what what our projected, you know, goal is. Right. People be stealing, right? Oh, you gonna have spillage and stillage. <laughs> 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 you gonna have it all. You gotta understand it, like, cause you know, like, think about it. How many times you been to the club and you got a free drink? Oh yeah, my homie used to work the bar. Right. So, <laughs> right. So, so I'm not saying that like you know anybody's stealing, but you know it's so easy to lose mm -hmm. in this industry. Why? Because people can get free things away. Uh, you can have waste. You can have a bunch of different you know things that you know it's like it's like putting a hole in the ship and just start to, you know, leak out, but you got to find a way to plunge that hole mm. or just just stop it, you know, just stop a little bit of it, but you can't get rid of it. You ever caught anybody stealing? Oh, yeah. Give me yeah. a scenario. What happened? I mean, at the bar, I mean, people void things off their checks and put it in their pocket, you know, like, but that's, that's why it's important to have, like, check every, like, have your managers check everything daily because, honestly, before I really decided to take it to where we're going now, I wasn't checking all that stuff. Yeah. You know, like, I'm just thought making money was cool, right? But when you want to grow in this industry, you got to start to look at everything. And that's what I started to do. And my team, Theoria, uh, Macy, Cedric, you know, they, they can identify. Like, they become, like, experts in POS systems. Like, the uh, the Toast, like, the POS system is the, uh, yeah. you know, point of sale, like, the mm -hmm. computer thing that we use. Yeah. And so they become experts in that to identify everything that needs to be identified to ensure everybody's, you know, being honest. But there's still always ways to get you know to get around it. Yeah, is your model to find the building that you like and lease it or buy it? So um, I think, of course, buying is always cool. But you know, like Tillman for T to say, uh, some spaces are you know, and this is coming from one of the largest restaurant tours in the world. You know, not every space is you know. I mean, you don't need to buy every space. You know, some spaces is, is worth leasing because you might end up paying less monthly for the lease, and you know, it just depends on different scenarios, right? Um, I just say whatever works for you. But of course, if you can buy the building, you should buy it. Um, or just get the get the business flowing, and you know, then use the business to make that purchase. Gotcha. All right, Morrow's in Monday. No, your mom's not in Monday. My mom is in Monday. Morrow's in Monday. My mom's a part of. Okay, gotcha. My mom's a part of everything, right? Like right. that's my mom's, right? She's yeah. a part of everything. She's the reason why I'm in this industry. But um, for the most part. You know, I was going at a rate to where she was like, you know what, son? I can't keep up with you. I feel it. Like, Bye. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, I'm like, I'm because every day, like, like I'll wake up and I'll see a spot and be like, yo, I want this. And I look at real estate every day, every day. It's like I'm looking for that piece of gold. And um, so I would look and I would see something and want it. Sometimes I may want it, but then I'm like, nah, that's not that's not actually like the the right deal for me. Yeah. Um, So that's me every day. So imagine being on my team and every day. You wake up, it's a new agenda. <laughs> right. I might be like, yo, we're doing this. And then the next day, I'm like, no, we're doing this. And it's a lot to deal with. Hey, God, hey, calm down, yo. Chill out, chill out, chill out. Okay. And that's you? Oh, 100%. Yeah. 100%. And, and, and so, so that's a lot to deal with. And, you know, it's just what comes with it. Because I'm one of those people, man, I am want to figure it out. Mm -hmm. Right? And, and sometimes I may get excited about something. Yeah. And then come to find out that may not be the right situation. Yeah. And so, um, you know, Every day, I mean, you just never know what you're going to get. And I think that's the exciting part because, you know, essentially, like, you know, getting new spaces is creating more opportunity um, to not keep, you know, to, so, so that everybody can grow, you know? Yeah, but you don't you don't think that there's a such thing as being overambitious, meaning it seems like you're taking on a lot right now. Oh, I am. I am. And look, we're going to talk six months from now. We're going we gonna to see where we're at. <laughs> Right. And but I mean I, I I have no doubt in my mind. Don't get it twisted. Like it's days where I'm like, I'm like, man, I need to slow down and, you know, just take a break. But right now I put a lot on my plate. Mm -hmm. And right now we grinding and, and and we about to figure it out. We about to get it. I don't have it figured out. Like I yeah. said, I got three for the steakhouse, right? Mm -hmm. I'm opening up a steakhouse, Morrow Steak. 
Imagine how 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 tough it is to open up a steakhouse. None of my yeah, restaurants imagine. offers the experience of what you will get at a steakhouse, right? You talking about higher pay? You talking about um, more food costs, labor costs? Everything's just just way more, and, and you got to have people that's really trained. So, like for example, I got you know I got a team of management on payroll already for the steakhouse, and that's not opening up for another few months. It's not. Even and so you talking about steakhouse? Like I got Chris. GM from Root Chris, executive chef from Root Chris, oh, wow. managers from Root Chris. Like, I don't know if I should be saying all that. Yeah, you're but, a <laughs> Larry, I, got, them all. I, I have a great lineup in which I, that's why I think we're going to be successful because we have a great back of the house and we got a great, you know, just team overall, you know, that, you know, it's like if you put the right team together, you can win championships. Yeah. So you might lose some, but losing don't mean that you quit. It's just like, you got to figure it out until you, until you win. So, um, I just think I got a great team yeah. that believe in the overall mission to where it's like we can't lose. I want to open a restaurant, bro, but I am extremely nervous. For one, I got too much going on in my life. I, I'm nervous every time I open a one because yeah. you never know what's going to happen. But the, re the reason I'm nervous is because I've never really heard good things about restaurants until now. And so I remember... I met this guy, I can't remember who it was, and he found out I owned these restaurants. He said, oh man, like he had so many negative things to say because he owned restaurants or whatever, right? But just because it happened that way for him, like doesn't mean that that's what, you know, like I'm happy, I'm yeah. enjoying it, right? right? I'm, I'm enjoying every bit of it because you gotta understand a lot of restaurants don't have, when restaurants don't do well, it's because they're losing money because they're not controlling their food costs or their labor costs or because people are not showing up, right? I'm controlling my food and my labor costs, plus promotion. You know, when it comes to creating a brand, I have experience in that. Mm -hmm. Have experience in bringing people to an establishment, right? Like promotion. Um, so I think a lot of the things that restaurants, you know, a person who may not be a be a part of the culture or outside networking. Like I spent the last twelve years of my life outside, really networking. You know, connecting the dots. So I think a lot of the things that people are afraid of you know, comes natural Got it. for me because I'm in, you know, I have, I produce events. That's like a, the engine behind a lot of what I do. And now anybody, every, a lot of people produce events on restaurants, but that don't mean they're going to have the same effect. You feel mm. me? I think I've been great at building relationships back when I didn't know why, you know, why, why when I didn't know the why, like when I was, you know, investing into these events to build relationships in hopes of making my money back, but I would lose, right? Yeah. So, for example, like when I opened up Morrow's, three months into it, Drake was at my restaurant. But I booked Drake in 2016, right? Got you. I didn't know I was opening up Morrow's in 2018, but I invested into a relationship, and basically when Morrow's opened up, they were, I saw him in LA, CJ, and uh, they was like, yo, we coming down to New Orleans on Monday to shoot the Nights for What video. We're going to come pass by the restaurant. Mm. I was open for three months. I didn't know CJ knew I had a restaurant open. Yeah. Right? So they said that on that Monday, they came by, whole city of New Orleans was outside. So, Jeez. you know, it's like, it's like. Hold on, he shot the video. No, he didn't shoot the, he didn't shoot the video there. They was like, yo, we come and eat when we come to New Orleans. Oh, so it's pretty much, if he shows up, then it's like, yo, Drake up here. Drake took a picture and it went viral. Like, you know, and, and a lot of people like Patty LaBelle, so. Think about it. All these people that I booked over the years, I own a restaurant, mm. right? I, I produce all these events in New Orleans with anybody you can think of, right? They come stop by the restaurant. And and so I book a lot of people over and over again. And, you know, it became a thing. Like, I've supported a lot of people in the past. And I think, you know, when it was their turn to support me, I had that support. And I think one of the things that helps, like, stick was the food was actually good, mm. right? Had the food not been that great, I mean, I would say that we, we would still be successful, but not as successful. Because I think in hospitality, like Tillman Fatita say, it's like, you gotta be great at something, right? Mm -hmm. Like, so you wanna be great at the best food ever, best hospitality. And I think if you're, if you offer like great hospitality and make people feel welcome, that it may change the way they, when they eat their food, the way it tastes, right? Yeah. Because it's like, if, if, if they walk in mad, nine times out of 10, they are not gonna like their food, they are gonna be ready to leave. But it's it's just, it's all like people feeling you know or they might give you another opportunity. The fact that their their service was great, yeah. um, the hospitality was good to where they'll give you another chance, or they might just come grab a drink and vibe. Gotcha, right? gotcha. So you know you got to be great at something, and you got to figure out what you want to be great at. 
Um, so if you could, if you had to pick one superpower in a restaurant, would it be the food, the vibe, the like the ambiance, or the the service? What's most important out of these three? The food, the vibe, or the service? I would say, or put them in order of importance. I would say, so when when you say the vibe, I would say the experience is probably one. Yes, right. Because if they if they have a great experience, that they'll get, they'll give you another chance, mm. right? But if it's strictly based upon the food, nine times out of ten, they're not coming back because there's no there's no vibe, there's no experience, and you know it's like it just it's just probably not likely to come back. So I would say the experience, the food, then the vibe, the customer service, the customer service. Gotcha. Okay. So what do you? Well, no, no, I would say experience, customer service, food. Really? Why? Because it's like you're not giving a place a second chance if it's strictly all about the food. Yeah. Right? Like, think about it. Right? Like, would you go to a place where, would you go back to a place that food was horrible, mm-hmm. but they service in their hospitality and the customer service was good? I would because maybe I just picked the wrong thing. Yeah. If the food, a lot, if the, a lot, if a lot the of people don't give you second good. chances. They got a lot of people that have not given me second chances. But if the food wasn't good and like there was a vibe and it was like a, you know what I mean, like an experience. But you may go over there and grab a, a cocktail and end up eating again. Right? So I think it's a million different ways to skin a cat. But I think, you know, one of the things that helped me build my brand was, you know, bringing people to New Orleans and showing that Southern hospitality. Yeah. You getting that experience that you can't get, right? Like, and... I think that's what like what, what my brand has been built on. Yeah. What's the conversation with the staff? Like what is what is kind of like the mantra, the thing that you input into the staff to make sure that, you know, this is the vibe of the restaurant? Um, I would say, I mean, so every every restaurant should have their own culture, right? So I would say, um, it's where like where 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 dope vibes and great food collide, right? So it's like, you know, just letting them know like, you know, we wanna it's just how I told you, like the experience. We want to provide a great experience, right? And I think, like, when you look at Morrow's, then you look at Monday, then you look at Sun Chung, and some people feel different about it, right? Different about what I'm saying, like. But I, I would say, like, making sure people enjoy themselves, right? Like, making sure people have a great time because they'll give us another another opportunity if we miss on the food one day, right? Because mm-hmm. it's never gonna be perfect. Yeah. We can aim for perfection, but you're gonna have days where you know things aren't as consistent as they need to be. But that's like in any industry, any business, like basketball, like you, LeBron not going to win every championship. Yeah. He's not going to win every game. So when you, when you look at it like that, it's like the goal is just to be great every day and understand that we, we're going to, you know, have some days where we're, we're off a little bit. But that's OK. Let's just keep striving to be better. So um, I just try to always just, you know, like like anytime I get any feedback, like I was in my restaurant yesterday a guy, a friend of mine, he gave me some feedback and I took notes and I sent it to my team and was like, yo, look, you know, we shouldn't be dealing with these type of issues, but I, I understand they occur, but let's figure out how we can avoid the issue mm-hmm. moving forward, right? Oh, cool, let's order more of this and that in order to avoid this issue, right? Yeah. So it's just, it's like putting out fires and just, man, just making sure that we um just trying to get better every day and, uh, you know, just just leading by example. You know, got it. You, you might you might catch me up in the like the other day. I walked in and I see stuff on the ground and I can't help but pick it up. You know, but you know it's kind of hard to get people to do things that you wouldn't do. That's right? a fact. So I always try to make sure. Like when my when was first open, man, I was I was busting tables. I was you know when Monday first opened, like you know I have no issue with you know doing. I I might bring food to the table, yeah. and people like yo like I ain't never expect you to bring my food. You know so. Yeah. Um, Monday is the it's like a club kind of vibe, right? Now, my Monday is a street restaurant. 100%. Restaurant. Which one's tree the house. tree house is the club? Yep. Okay, and I gotta I gotta ask this question: Who's over hiring? Because wow. if you go to a club, there has to be a certain aesthetic, right? But is that can can it be looked at as discrimination if? They don't fit the profile of what's uh, uh, what I want to see when I come in a club if I'm one of your customers. Holler at the HR department. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't deal with hiring, right? You. Like, you know, <laughs> push up, like, push up. I don't deal with hiring, right? So, yeah. like, I don't get involved with, with the hiring. I may have friends that reach out and say, look, my little brother, cousin, sister want to need yeah. a job, right? I don't even get involved in all that. I'm like, yo, look, I'll send them over to Macy or to Theora or whomever, and you know if they everything check out they're hiring, but 
you know, I, I'm not in the business of just making just everybody happy because then I'll end up sacrificing my business for, for sure. you know, for, for others, you know, and yeah. I want people to understand that. So um, I've had that. I, I always wondered that though. Like how I don't do get involved you, with hiring. Yeah, of, I used to, I used to, but then I realized I can't get involved with hiring because yeah. it just becomes too, too sticky. You know, like I just stay away from it and let my team do it. They do a great job. And um, so I was at, I was at Hooters one day. Right. And I don't know if it was the person I was talking to or it was the, the waitress or whatever. I think it was the waitress. Oh crap. I said something flew my eye. Did it? Or am I bugging? <laughs> did something fly in my eye or am I tripping? They Goodness don't, gracious. They don't cut that. I don't know. Yeah, we're going to keep it up. All right. Um, <laughs> that was weird. You got a close up angle too, didn't you? Okay. Um, that was weird. Okay. So I was at Hooters and I think it was the waitress. And she was like, we have, to, we have to maintain our figure and maintain our shape. And I think like every more every day they like line them up or whatever. And if you gain too much weight, they can fire you. Oh, yeah. We, we ain't on nothing like that. I know, I know y'all yeah, not, but I'm saying. That's crazy. Because they said when, they're, when they sign the employee contract, right. they're, not, they're not being hired as waitresses. They're being hired as models. Mm-hmm. So for the, and that, that's a Hooters, that's a big right. company. Like if you start not looking like a model, they can fire you with no problem. I always wondered that. That's I always wondered that. Like how, like how can you legally hire some people? Yeah, I mean. Because I've been to some spots where you're like, hold on, she got the same, she got the same look as that one right there. I, I mean, I think, you know, when you're hiring, you, you're hiring based off a bunch of things, you know, like, you know, experience, um, um, hygiene. You know, everything like, you know, when people you understand what you're dealing with in this service industry, you know, it, it matters, you know, from the from the nails down to how you present yourself to, you know, your hair, you know, so a lot of things matter. So it's just like when you go to establishment like like Houston's like it's certain things you can and can't do when it pertains to your nails, to your hair, your, you know, so I just think that, you know, every restaurant is different. Yeah. But for the most part, like I don't get involved in it, that we have manuals and handbooks mm -hmm. and, we, and we're still developing. We're still developing handbooks. You know things just just operation, operation wise, like on on how we're moving forward, and every day is evolving. You know, so, um, but that's things that I don't even. At one point, I used to try to you know play a role in everything, but I can't. You know, it's impossible. So, um, thankful for a, a dope team to really help facilitate everything. Would you recommend opening a restaurant that's not serving liquor? Well, I mean, depending on what you're. If I just want like a little wing sandwich spot. Well, well, or something. I mean, if you want a wing sandwich spot, it depends on like the profit. The profit is in liquor, right? You got more profit, but you can be successful in. You know, McDonald's don't serve liquor. You know, like that's fast fast food, and they've been successful. Um, I I know friends who have restaurants that don't serve liquor, but it's more so like grab and go stuff. Um, um, like my homie, I think Smackers uh out in um, Memphis. I don't believe they serve liquor, but he's doing great. Got a several locations. Yeah. You um, wouldn't waste your time on like an ice cream spot or nothing. I mean, I would do it, but not from a, a finance. Like, so if I was to open up an ice cream spot, it's with the intent to open up a hundred of them, a uh, thousand of them, right? Mm. Because I think you know when you talk about what, like where I am now and, and what we generate now versus like an ice cream shop spot, like <laughs> you talking about sense. fifteen. Like you could be successful at it, but yeah. you know, and it's easier to open up. Like I just can't go open up a Morrow's tomorrow, right? You can go put up an ice cream spot, quick, easy build out. And, and, and pop them up all over, but um, I just like the game I'm playing right now, right? So I don't see myself, you know, um, sw sw switching gears. Like, I, I know what I'm doing. We created a blueprint, and it's still evolving. We still students um, have mentors who's providing us with a lot of information to just be successful in this industry. Um, but I don't see myself switching the game plan. Like, right now, we've got new concepts opening up, but Morrow's, we're about to, you know, really expand Morrow's, you know, so... Side, side on, you said two things that I want to talk about. I don't got nothing to do with where we're at right now. So, audience, please uh, forgive me. You had a gambling problem? I used to. What was the issue? I couldn't get up from the blackjack table. That was the issue. <laughs> that was the issue. I couldn't get up. But um, I would say I don't have a problem no more. Like, I gambled recently, mm -hmm. right, uh, when I was in uh, in Atlantic City for the for the gala. Mm -hmm. um, I gambled. Man, I was, oh, man. Flashbacks, <laughs> but but the thing is, like I couldn't get up from the table at that moment. But once I walked away and I left, I haven't gambled since, right? Mm. So 
like just say if I'm in it at that moment, I'm in it. But I used to be like every day, all day, twenty four hours, really lose everything type gambling. Yeah, but now it's like you know I gamble on my businesses. Right, I'm gambling right now. Like open up three spots. So the gamble is it's more accurate. You know, it's, change it's more, the gamble a little bit. Yeah. So you know I know more about what I'm doing than what's underneath that blackjack card. Right. right? <laughs> so um, because you know like I always gamble. Like I went from losing money in the casino. Right. Well, I went from losing money in the casino where I did Drake and Diddy inside Masquerade Casino to like, yo, working out a deal and start producing events and gave up gambling and just really just started to like, that's when I started to go big on the parties, right? Investing crazy money into the parties, just trying to, just hoping to, that I can pull it off, right? Mm. And it would work out, right? Sometimes it would work out, sometimes I would lose. So I just switched the gamble up, you know, and that's where my the title of my book come from. All best on me. The risk and rewards of becoming an entrepreneur. Oh, there's risk and rewards in it. So I was there for them all, you know, for the risk and the reward. Because yeah. um, a lot of people, you know, would spend their time pulling the lever at the penny machine instead of walking over to the high limit table. Yeah. And so I don't work. I don't do too well with the penny machine, right? Yeah. Each his own. But I believe that, like, if you want a certain lifestyle, and it don't have to be um, whatever lifestyle you want, right? Like, if you want to live comfortably and, and be free. You know, like it's gonna require you to, you know, to do certain things, right? Take certain risks, but you can live comfortably and not take the risks. But I just choose to uh, take risks that can, you know, impact my family, you know, for generations to come, you know, and, and build legacy while I'm doing it. So you still have a gambling problem. It's just a different. Well, yeah, you know, you know listen. I gambled. I gambled, not cards. I gambled in, you know, like, like so. I placed a bet on the Saints. Saints lost, but right. I gambled with a homie. And my home, uh, and what you put up? Like, that was like it was like we better a little thousand, but okay. we knew the Saints was losing. But it's like I get a rush from gambling, right? Mm -hmm. So my home was like, bro, you know they about to lose. Why are you about to even bet it? And I'm like, yo, it's like it's like a fix. You feel me? Like <laughs> even though I may not be in the casino, but I like to jump off the cliff, right, and really figure shit out. And you know, just kind of you know whatever it is, I do that for fun. But it, it's a rush that I get, you know, and I like I like the rush of gambling, you know, like in business, just as an entrepreneur and different things like that. So I love it. I love it. I get a rush from it. An another, uh, first off, gamble with me then. Let's open something. Like, let's do, let's do, do something. Do it. Like, we got to do some real estate. That's what I'm, that's what Terica, I'm saying. come on, man. Let's man. go. Terrica, you ain't <laughs> never called me back yet. I'm waiting on you to call me back. <laughs> come on, T. Let's make this thing happen, man. Shout out the, to Jay Lee. The, the second thing is, um, you didn't mention your dad much. Yep. You have a relationship with him? Nope. At all? Nope. Not at all. Somebody asked me this the other day. Like, why you uh said you had no memories of 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 your father? I'm like, so like, why not? I'm like, because he's been absent. <laughs> How long? When was the last time you engaged with him? Uh I'll probably say maybe five years ago, maybe when I was in Chicago, I saw him, right? But we like we haven't had much conversation after the beginning that. Beginning of Morrow's. This was Probably, it probably was like in the beginning or like right right when Morrow's opened up, something like that. But honestly, I can't remember. But uh, he lives in Chicago. Lives in Chicago. Don't have many memories of you know memories memories at all. Before that, no. So he was never in, in neither myself or my sister has a relationship with him. But before you saw him five years ago, I can't remember. I mean, every blue moon I might see him in Chicago, right? Because uh, I may be out there. Um, but yeah, no. Nah, you know, you don't reach out. You don't reach out. No. Gotta feel some way. I mean, at one point, I think um, I did, but I mean, I think maybe I still do. And I think it's like I, don't, I try not to think about it. But I'm gonna tell you, well, honestly, for Father's Day, I, I really, uh, um, I had like this. Um, I was holding my daughter, and I'm like, mm -hmm. it's just the best feeling ever, right? Yeah. And like, I got like a little emotional. I'm like, damn, like, how could you ever like? You know, like, you know, just being a father, like, you feel those emotions. And it's like, how could you not be there, right? Like, the most precious thing you could ever do. Like, the best thing you could ever do. Yeah. And so, um, <clears throat> I think it's like a little, I think I still, honestly, like, might hold a little grudge. Like, I don't hold grudges against anybody. When I see them, we speak, right? Um, but, but there's so much you probably want to say. Yeah, and honestly, I think it was it's probably because... I haven't said it because I, I kind of maybe expected him to say, right? Yeah. You feel me? Like, um, but I feel like he's waiting for me to say something. 
Right? But it's like. Your daddy's son, my boy. <laughs> Both of y'all. Right. I'm waiting on you. You wait on me. But, no, I, but I can imagine that's what it is because yeah. it's just like, it's, it's sometimes it's like, yo, why, you know? I don't know, man. Growing up, did your and mom. I'm one person that don't hold grudges, man. I can forgive and forget. I don't care what it is. I forgive and forget, man. It don't even bother me. I go about my life, right? But it's just something about that situation to where it's like, I don't know if I'm expect, like, expecting him to be a father and say something, you know, like, and, and somebody told me this one time, right? Somebody said this and it made perfect sense, right? It was like, sometimes we look at our parents as superheroes that we forget the fact that they were once kids and they made mistakes, mm -hmm. right? And, and like, when they told me that, I'm like, damn, like, for real, because as teenagers, as young adults, we make mistakes. And, you know, like, I've made mistakes, right? And so we're expecting, we, we, we hold them, we hold them those mistakes that they made, we take them to heart, right? Yeah. When in actuality, like, you know, they were kids and they made mistakes. And I tell myself that, but for some reason I haven't, you know, I, I think I'm just kind of just like, you know, we, like even when we see each other, we never had a conversation. What do you call them when you see them? I don't even know. No, I'm saying, is it like, I, hey, I, I, it's I, like I pop know. or? No, it's not pop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I never called him pops, but I don't know even know what I called him. Honestly, like I can't remember. Okay, hold on. I, I don't have much memory. When, when of you this. see, when you when you saw him in Chicago, did y'all say y'all in town, yeah, yeah, or, or you just I remember ran being into in him. Chicago one time, and my mom was like, "Yo, you should go see see your pops while you're out there, right? You should go see Lorenzo." <laughs> she called Lorenzo, right? She said, what you, was should <laughs> you should go see him. I'm like, okay. And like we might see him like for, for like a little second. And I think the last time I saw him, it was me, my sister, and um me, my sister, and um and him and we went eight. Oh, because like your cousin. sister has a relationship with him. She has a relationship. You happen with to be with your sister. Yeah, so so like, you know, she, you know, her her her, her and me, like, you know, she's a she's a female, right? Yeah. So she I think maybe that was a void in her life that, you know, she missing, which made her want to establish a relationship later on in life with him. It's avoiding um, your life too, Larry. Huh? It's avoiding your life too. You're just trying not to like. I mean, maybe and that's what I'm saying. Maybe, maybe, maybe that's what it is. Like, maybe that's what it is. I, I mean, I, I really don't know. Get one good conversation out, man. Right. Like you're one. Right. I mean, you're right, and I'm not against that. I don't, I don't have. That. And the only reason I'm saying it's because I don't have my mother or my father, and none of my grandparents. <laughs> so, yeah. I am the top of my family tree right now. Wow. I was blessed to have my mom yeah. and my dad in my life my entire life. Mm -hmm. But even as I got older, it became a little more distant because I'm just living my own life. I'm oh. just working, right? And then uh, I wind up losing my dad. And it was so it was so hurtful to me because I this is like me. I'm, I'm starting my business and like really getting things going. So when he called, he lived in Philly. I was in Atlanta. When he called, it's like, hey, Pop, I'm going to call you back. And I don't call him back. And I'm like, there's so many things that I want to say now that I can't. Right. But if something ever happens to you or him, there will be there will be so many unanswered questions mm -hmm. that you'll never be able to get the answer to. So, like whatever it is right now, I would advise you. That's a conversation. Just you know, there's so many things I want to say. Why did you leave? What you been up to? Like, let let me know, and then you go about your way. At least you got your questions answered. But don't let it. Yeah, and I pass. think it's probably it's probably me. Like just expect having expectations of him, yeah. right? And expecting him to one day call and be like, yo, let's have a conversation, right? It's never happened. But him may not knowing how to have the conversation, because I believe my, mo my mother told me, like, yo, like, I think he just don't know how to, right? Yeah, he don't have to work. And words. so I, I understand it could be uncomfortable not being there. And, you know, so I'm not like, even though that I may hold, like, I may feel something, I've never, like, you know, I was able to see him. You know what I mean? Like, when, the times I did see him and not feel away or, you know, not um, act the way, you feel me? It's just like, yeah. it just, you know, was what it was, you know? But you're right, 100%, yeah. you know? This year. <laughs> <laughs> make a commitment, because you're never going to make the commitment. Man, I got to it, it, it's, it's so, piss on myself. Bro, <laughs> it's, so, it's so near and dear to me, because right. when, I, when, I, when I see somebody who has it, it's like, But you got to understand, you feel a different emotion. You feel a different For emotion sure. having a person there yes. and having a person be absent, right? For sure. That emotion, yes, it may it may not be as strong. I mean, it's, no, it's not going, it's, it's impossible for it to be as strong as like a 100%. person being there. So, you know, like the emotion I feel is just like, it's just kind of like whatever, you know? Yeah. 
which is not not necessarily the right way to feel. But you know, when you grow up without, and you know, you have to, you know, you don't you never got a call for your birthday, never got a call for nothing, right? Yeah. I'm like, like it's almost like my mom did a great job, and like, you know, that's who I owe it all to. You know what I mean? She she she's been she's played she's been a mother, father, been everything to me over the course of my life, and um, you know, it's just like. She deserves her, all her flowers, you know? For a hundred percent. Because, like, you know, it's, you know, I look at it sometimes, like, what if, you know, he was there, right? What, what, what would I be? Mm. So I'm not mad at the fact that he's not there. Sure. You know, would I still be this person, you know? So maybe that was motivation for me to really become a man at an early age, you know? Sure. I, you know, so I, I definitely think the gap need to be bridged and the conversation need to be had. When you going to do it, though? I don't know. Let's set a target. Just... At least for the sake of this interview, just this year, we got a couple months left in the year. Uh, they go watch this interview like, all right, yeah, Larry, we have this conversation Hey, look, with your dad. if anybody sees Larry out in the streets, okay, just mention it. Just mention it, okay? I guarantee you somebody will mention it. <laughs> for sure. It's, it's important, especially, you know, as you're, you're a man with a child yeah. and, you know, you, you might and That's what makes me want to be in my daughter's life so much 100%. is the fact that I didn't have, like, yeah. you know. It's it's the absence, you know, make me just want to be present. Yeah, you married, yeah. engaged. Congratulations, yep. congratulations. Um, which I think is really really dope because you are at the height of, you're not at the height of where you're going, but you're at the height of your own success so far. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So sitting the layup line, okay. warming up right before the game. Still warming up, right? Right. Still warming but, up. But you're in the NBA now. You oh, know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, we're in, we in the pros. But to be at the height of where you're going yeah. and still say, I want to commit to somebody. Yeah. I think that's that's maturity. Yeah. It really is. Cause I'm sure you ain't never had no problems. You know what I mean? Like finding companionship or whatever. Right. So what makes you want to commit at this point? And I got to ask another question is, are you going to pre Ooh. All right. We're not going to, I'm just going to throw it out there. We're going to get off it. We're going to get off it. <laughs> okay. Let me, let me say this. I didn't, I didn't, but I wasn't thinking about it. And the question is, if I was at the time, would I have? My answer now is no, because I didn't do it, but I don't know. All right. <laughs> yeah. Is that a conversation that you got to have? Or I mean, of course, it's a conversation you got to have. I mean, I think, you know, uh, prenup for people who may not really know is just an agreement between two partners, right? Yeah. That's all it is. It's, a, it's, it's, a, it's an agreement. And, um, you know, I think, you know, everybody contribution is different, yeah. right? For sure. Some people con contribution may be financial. Some people may be yeah. a lot of effort and time that, you know, right. in order to... So a prenup isn't you don't get nothing. I'll get a prenup is just an agreement that both y'all can right, put because I mean in. sometimes when you invest your all into a situation, you know, when it's time, just say if you ever have to part ways, it's like, you know, maybe the person like you know somebody who's making a house a home sometimes may not have the opportunity that the male has to go out and go create right. Mm -hmm. So you're creating, 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 100%. and while you know the house is becoming more comfortable and become, you know, filled with kids, yeah. you know, essentially it's like, you know, but they don't have the opportunity to create. Right. So I understand the importance of a prenup. Um, of course, that's conversations that, you know, we, we have, we will have before um, marriage. But gotcha. I think, you know, it's, it's all relative to, you know, who, uh, to the people that's getting, they got to marry each other. Right. For sure. For sure. So this is dope, man. This was a very well-rounded conversation. What's the last question you asked? Um, that. Oh, the last question. Oh, so, oh yeah. So, um, you know, what makes you say, okay, I don't want the streets. I know where I'm going. I know where I'm at right now. But what makes you like settle down at this moment? Oh, um, I think, I think um, for anybody, like my, my OG told me this, Cannon Jasper, he said, when you want to be great, it comes with great responsibility, right? And so when you look at like, successful people, you know, you, you don't typically become successful by just wilding out, right? Mm -hmm. Like just the cars, the girls, the strip clubs, the like, you know, like, yeah, you can have success and do all of those things, but I think the success comes when you have a, a solid foundation to stand on, right? And success is not all in the form of currency, right? So I think, you know, um, when you want, you know, to go beyond, you know, you gotta just plant your feet somewhere. And planting your feet somewhere is like, you know, planting, you know, building a home and getting getting kids and getting more responsibility and just 
you know, just growing and just, you know, having your, your, a strong foundation and, and to stand on. So, um, you know, because I see friends a lot of times, like, you know, they choose the streets, right? And when I say streets, just don't understand the importance of, you know, like having a a, a, a a home, you feel me? And I think that's important, man. But that also because, like, you know, I have great people around me. Um, they have solid foundations and, you know, I'm able to see, get a different perspective, you know, from, you know, from them and, you know, just, just their relationships and their, you know, their journey, you know. So I think it's important if you want to grow, man, you got to have a strong foundation. But everybody's strong foundation may be different, right? That's a fact. It may not consist of a, a, a wife or, you know, whatever it is to you, you know, yeah. um, that's cool. But I think for me, I think stability is important, um, you know, to, to create what, you know, to, to go where I'm trying to go. Yeah. Are you staying in the restaurant space or is there some other things you want to do outside of that, whether it's media or? Um, I think right now, like at one point I was doing like 20 different things, mm. but I like, I'm like doing like three things right now. Right. And, you know, just making my investments, real estate, um, restaurant pr events, but uh, still do events. Oh yeah, hell yeah, I gotta do events. I mean, I didn't know you still. I thought you was like just all restaurants. So, so I got treehouse and stuff. I still do events though. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, I think you know, like like I, like I told you in the beginning of the conversation, like the events and the club stuff. That's not longevity, right? When you talk about longevity, I look at the restaurant industry. But I think the goal right now is for me to grow and. Um, build this hospitality group as big as I can build it. Um, Cause I know right now, I know it's no, the sky's the limit, right? Like we don't have no limitations on us, right? Like we built the brand and I told you like, the, the, the Morrow's brand has grown to where, you know, I can be, you know, I could be in a, in a room in LA, right? And I say, yeah, I'm, uh, I, I was in, I was in Ghana, mm -hmm. right? Having a conversation for about 45 five minutes with this guy. And uh, long story short, uh, I think somebody came up in Ghana and said something, oh, you're Larry, such and such. But then when I told him my name, Larry Marvel, like, yo, he freaked out. In Ghana. In Ghana, right? And so, they, of course, they're from, from the States. But um, I told him my name. He was like, yo, like, it's crazy, nigga. I've been hearing about you for so long. It was like, you're, you're like a ghost. Like, I never put a face with the name. <laughs> but it's like, I've been hearing, like, you know, your reputation precedes itself. And I think just, I'm saying that to say it's like, you know, the reputation and a brand that's being built over the years, like, it's not like, you know, I, I'm confident you can walk in a lot of rooms around this country. And, you know, I I believe that people, they 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 understand me, right? They understand the work that I put in. A lot of people see my grind. Like, for example, Angela E, right? Mm -hmm. Good friend of mine, about seven, eight years. And she's seen my grind, right? Right when I was just a Larry the promoter, right? Mm -hmm. And she's seen me, you know, go from there to now and just, be, you know, I'm in this position and, you know, we we share the same rooms, you know, the same friends. And, you know, I was just this little kid from New Orleans, you know, 20 years old with, with a vision using booking agents to book talent to, you know, getting in, you know, getting my feet planted and building these relationships and just putting myself in a position to where, like, you know, I'm on pace to cre create a hundred million dollar, two, three, four hundred million dollar company, right? Mm. So um, it's just one of those things that I know, right? It's happening. It's happening right this second, right? Um, you know, and like, it's just, it's just happening, man. Like, yeah. like I know what's going to happen. Like, sure. I know for a fact. It, it ain't no, yeah. only way is if God have other plans, you know, for <laughs> me, you know, but I, I mean, I know what's going to happen. Yeah. It's easy. Incredible, man. Yeah, I appreciate you swinging by too, man. And I appreciate um, you, man. This is long overdue. Absolutely. Glad we got to do it, man. Absolutely. I got to ask this question uh, in closing. Uh, where do you see yourself or what do you see yourself accomplishing over the next five years? And the only reason I'm asking the question is because I want to watch this interview five years from today. Hmm. So five years. So I'm not a big, you know, planner. Like I'm like, I wake up. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling you, like, I'll switch the whole script, right? <laughs> the whole movie be changed. Skating rink. We're right. opening skating rinks, guys. No, 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 really. For <laughs> real, for real. But I would say we'll probably be, you know, if not the biggest, one of the largest black hospitality groups in the country. Mm. Um, and I'm saying that, you know, I like mm. to manifest what, I like to manifest things and everything I, I've said is it's come to fruition. Um, I just think what we have is something very unique. Um, 
when it pertains to hospitality, when it pertains to just culture, right? We got social equity. We got social currency. We have great hospitality. Like, it's not many people that you can talk to and 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 they can say anything other than, damn, Larry really <laughs> rolled that shit out, right? Like, and, and so it's nobody you can speak to that I've dealt with, right? That can say anything other than that, and I stand on that, right? Because I take pride in who I am, what I represent, and just like the work I put out. So, you know, it's never about the money; it's about the experience and creating those moments in people's lives. Because if I got to spend a few extra dollars to create a moment that somebody will remember for you know, the next 10, 15 years, it's like, all right, cool. Like, like it's worth it, right? And so I think that's why I've been blessed to be in rooms when I'm not present, mm-hmm. right? So like, you know, and I'm blessed to have a great ecosystem, a great environment of people around me that, you know, that root for me, that support me, that um, just help, you know, just just every day. So um, next five years, man, I mean, we are gonna be sitting at some table Discussing some numbers, or we just gonna decide like, oh, look, we going for the for the half a B, right? Are we going for the for the whole B, right? Yeah, like, yeah, like yeah, that's yeah, the things yeah. that we gonna be talking about in five years, right? So building out all this for the exit, and not just for the exit, man. Just for the just for the just for the conversation, right? Mm-hmm. You know, I think you know you want to feel what that feel like, right? But at that moment, you don't want to be like, oh, cool, I'm gonna sell, I'm gonna sell, because that's that's the first thing I think we always. Resort to like, let me sell and, you know, but if you can, one of my mentors told me this, Cindy Torres, he was like, if you're cash flowing like that, why sell? Mm-hmm. Now, if you just stressed out and just ready to get out the industry, you ready to wash your hands, but cool, but, you know, why sell? Now, if the number's significant enough, maybe, but if you cash flowing like that, you know, a lot of people, it's like, a lot of people buy hospitality groups. It's like buying a, 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 a duplex, right, that's cash flowing. Mm-hmm. Right when you got a business that's cash flowing, you can go to the bank and get loans. You can get all this stuff. Yeah. Right, you got your P and L's in order. You got everything in order. You can go acquire what you want to acquire, because the, the you can get the restaurant industry is not what you resort to to just get rich. Mm-hmm. It's about when you get it, what you can acquire along the way yeah. that can help you get rich. Right, so you can acquire more restaurants, more real estate, different things like that. And uh, I just think it's putting me in a position to where you know nothing's off limits. Mm-hmm. Right. Like, you know, if I want it, I can get it. It'll acquire it, whether it's like the 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 skyscraper on you know uh <laughs> on Broadway, yeah. right? It's just about it's levels to it, right? So it's like, you know, just keeping your numbers in check and um just being intentional about it, right? Just being intentional. I love it, man. Yo, thank you so much, man. It's, I'm I'm inspired, man, because I I've been uh tiptoeing around some stuff. Jump, and jump. Yeah, going like talking mm-hmm. to you is like, yo, I I got these two joints running. I'm about to open three more, and we it's up. I'm gonna see you know what I mean? Jump, man, jump. I mean, if you don't jump, it's like, shit, man. We got we got less time than what we think. Yeah, right. We got less time than what we think, man. So fulfill everything, you know. Fulfill you, fulfill yourself. I'm all in, man. I'm all I am in. inspired, man. Listen, uh, Larry, thank you so much, man, for coming by. Uh, again, this is going to inspire people on a whole nother level just to see your story and just see like you are determined and you know your stuff. Right. You know what I mean? So, um, let everybody know how they can connect with you and uh, also close us out with a word of wisdom. You can connect with me at Larry Morrow uh, on Instagram, on Twitter. Um, um, Morrow, or you can just Google, you know, Morrow's, whatever you want to Google, and um, I'm sure it'll pop up. But I would say, man, for anybody out there striving to be the best version of yourself, I think the most important thing is to just identify, you know, who you are, right? Um, just understand, like, you know, just understand, like, you know, I think, you know, we waste a lot of time in between time just, like, fucking off, right? And I, I think once you lock in on, you know, what it is that you want, you have a target that you can aim at, right? Versus just like shooting in thin air. So I, I think if you know you want something, you just got to really lock in on it and just be willing to sacrifice. Because I look at like you know all the sacrifices I made early early on, like just even just working at McDonald's, right? Just getting in, getting that, just creating a habit, right? Mm-hmm. You got to create those habits. Yeah. Just working, and a lot of people haven't worked much or maybe afraid to work at McDonald's or whatever. But like that's just the starting point. That's not the ending point. So. I think don't be afraid, man, just to get out there and and, and be willing to work. Because I still ask people, like, I remember Cortez Bryant for years and years and years. I'm like, yo, when can I come intern for you? Mm-hmm. I can work on the road. He's like, oh, Who like, who's Cortez Bryant? 
that's Young Money Wayne's um, former manager. Oh, gotcha. Cortez Martin, yeah, he was in the music industry. But I used to just ask, like, yo, look, let me come intern. And, like, you know, they're like, yo, what you want to work for me for? Like, you know, you're doing extremely well. But it's not that, man. Just, you know, I've always been a student. I want to learn more, right? So, um, and surround myself with greatness, with people who just um, much more mature, more experienced, just live longer than me and just can really pass different things down on to me. So, um, I just say, don't mind being a student, man. Put your best foot forward, grind, don't give up, keep going, and just stay prayed up, man. I love it. I love it, man. We appreciate you, man. Uh, make sure y'all do yourself a favor. Go follow Larry Morrow, okay? And if you're in New Orleans, okay, go to Morrow's. Again, it depends on the time. What's I'm your favorite thing on the menu? I, I think we had, like, some clam appetizer. Uh, 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 oysters. Oysters. It was some sort of bread. It was like Coffee a fl- bread. Yeah, oh, I had that yesterday. Oh crazy. man, crazy man, it's yeah, so good. Yo, fire, bro. And uh, I'm the type of person that I'm gonna order what I'm ordering, and whoever I was, whoever I'm with, I'm checking to make sure they ordering something I like too, because yeah. I'm oh, on everybody's right. plate. That's just yeah. how I play. But it depend. I'm typically not in New Orleans long, so I'd have to make a decision. It's probably going to be tomorrow's, but Monday. If I'm coming in on a Monday, you yeah, to be on a Monday. I thought it was all, I thought it was Mondays. It's called Monday. It's open on Monday. Yes. It's it's one day. It's not it's not open seven days though. It's closed on Tuesday. It's closed on Tuesday. Okay, yeah, yeah. Because I, I know it was either oh, look, one day. Look, that concert, we probably got the busiest Mondays in Louisiana. That's what you were telling me. Yeah. It's the busiest Monday in Louisiana. Like seven, eight hundred people on a Monday. And like, you know, what? a lot of restaurants are closed on a Monday. Uh or or like just slow, right? So they just forced to close. That's why I want to go on a Monday. But like on Monday, oh man, be jumping. Yeah. Seven, eight hundred people. Yeah, man, and, and you know that's like the concept. Like all day happy hour on Monday. Yo, and you doing I own something? It, I, I, I own it. <laughs> you, you doing something crazy in Morrow's with eighty five people? So I know a Monday. Oh wait, can we do that here? Monday, Atlanta. I mean, no, Morrow's is coming to Atlanta. But when Morrow's come, Morrow's gonna make. Look, I'm just saying, Morrow's need bigger space. If Morrow's had bigger space, it's gonna be, be bigger. Oh. Yeah, it's gonna be big. It's gonna probably be like one fifty, right? Like private room and stuff. Like we lose a lot of revenue, like just because we don't have private rooms. Yeah. We don't have, you know, we don't have. A, I don't have a huge kitchen, yeah. right? Really? With a bigger kitchen, like I just built like a. I'll be making magic out of that. I just time. built the kitchen at Monday, bro. A thirty-two foot hood, so a twenty foot hood and a twelve foot hood. I could feed two thousand people, right? Like, like this, like, and you know that was a great investment. You know, it cost a lot of money, but now I can. I can train staff from for the steakhouse. I can, mm-hmm. you know, prep. I can cater. I can just create extra streams of revenue. You know, I'm just creating all these different revenues I need this one building because it's 13,000 square feet. So, you know, why not, you know? Mm. Also, I think I had like a Cajun pasta. Ca- ca- a Cajun crawfish pasta. Cajun crawfish pasta. Cajun crawfish yeah, yeah, pasta, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. See, that's, yo, you got you to gotta check people. They be like, yo, I've been there and I like no, it. Listen, you be like, what you had? I'm telling you, I meet, actually meet my realtor tomorrow, right? Like when I come to Atlanta, I meet with him. He's showing me a couple spots. Mm-hmm. But, you know, as soon as we find that spot, we're going to be here. You lease or buy? Or or, you, or, or you're, you're saying I, I come, it depends? No, if, if I come here, I'm going to probably lease. You know, yes, gotcha. with, you know Mondays you bought or lease. No, Mondays I'm leasing, but I'm currently in, in the process of mine. Got it. Okay. We're going through all the banking and everything. Got it. So you don't you don't have to think, let me buy first. Yeah, I mean, first it. first see if the business is going to hit first, you know? Like, ah. you might buy, but, I mean, you know, my concept over there has been proven in the bank looking at it like, damn, like, they're going to find, they're financing me because I, I don't even have two years worth of tax returns, right? But because you can get creative financing, you can get you can get a little creative with it when, you, when you're showing the revenue that I'm showing, right? Mm. You can, you know... Um, and then a friend of mine owns the building, so it's like we can get all the type of we can get real creative with it. Oh wait, okay. We so I, I would say just go lease, and then if you yeah. don't well buy it, you know. Okay, I'm, no I'm gonna start. I'm, you I have think to I own am going to, to 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 generate revenue. I think I am going to start with like a little sandwich spot, though. Do it. I you mean, know what I mean? Just, I mean, or, or or just go a little bigger. Leave me alone, Larry. Okay, like come on. I chill. mean, just go a little bigger. Cause I mean, you like it. It's like man, sell some liquor. Sell mm-hmm. some vibes. Sell something. Like, you know, like. That's where the money at. I don't think you're going to. I mean, you can. The sandwich shop, you you have to put up, you know, if you want to do, just to say, uh, you want to create an eight figure situation, you might have You might. Each sandwich shop may do one, one million to 1.5. But if you say your goal is to generate eight figures, you know, you might have to do a little bit more. You got to do like eight to 10 of them. What would be the safest start off? What is the safest concept? If I was going to start, say, I do want to go into, I want to have an eight figure conversation. 
What is the safest start? What concept? I don't think it's gonna be. I don't, I don't think it's gonna be safe if you like. <laughs> None of them safe. No, no, I, no. I don't think if you want to create eight figure a, a business that generates eight figures, it's considered safe, right? I yeah. don't think no business you can create that's going to be safe and you generate eight figures, right? Like you got to go big. Like I didn't know Monday was going to do what it's doing, but you know um, we have the space and it's just all about filling the seats, and so that's not. I wasn't safe. You know, I was paying rent on my pocket first. You know, like, and that's a heavy rent, right? Yeah. I was paying rent out my pocket the first four, four five months. So, um, you know, that's six figures in rent coming out of the pocket. Mm. And, you know, I, I wouldn't say safe is what you should be looking for. Look for the shit that got a little risk to it because with that risk, going to come with the, it's like going to be rewarded by it, you know? So like don't go that. safe, man. Unless okay. you're about to put up 10 sandwich, shop, sandwich spots, don't go safe. Go, okay. you know, and then just get some guidance along the way. I'm here. Yeah. Call me. Oh, I appreciate it. Oh, it's up, oh. man. It's up. All right. We all got the official co-sign from Coach. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> nah, I appreciate you, my brother. You're oh, doing good. some amazing things. And, Thank you. Uh, you are an inspiration, bro. Yeah, you are it. an inspiration. So listen, man, make sure y'all do yourself a favor. Go follow Larry Morrow when you are in New Orleans, okay? Make sure you check it out. If you're watching this and too long, too much time has passed, you can probably check it out in different places, okay? And check out, you know what I mean, Dave's Sandwich Shop by the time of this job. Nah. <laughs> but uh, yes, follow Larry Morrow, man. And also do yourself a favor. Go get you some social proof, meaning go build something. Build something big. Build something special. But it's your obligation to come back to your community and teach them how you did it. It's the only way our community grows. We out of here. Like, subscribe. We out. Appreciate it, brother. If you like the video that you just watched, click this one. You're going to like this one, maybe even more. Click it right now.